Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, so first things first, you might notice that there is something new over here. Um, I'm not going to address it in this video because you are gonna see it on Saturday, but today the focus of this video, obviously, as you know, are my Hoyas. I think it was in 2022. I don't think it was last year. I have no concept of time. I have no concept of time anymore. Um, but I think it was in 2022 or 20, maybe the early part of 2023 when I was going absolutely wild with Hoyas. Like I, I just went on this binge of Hoyas and like that's all I wanted for a long time. Not a long time, but like this little spurt of time. And I accumulated a bunch of Hoyas and then Hoy Apocalypse happened. If you don't know what Hoy Apocalypse, I will I will link the three part video in the description. It's essentially when I got mealybugs and flat mites, burned the crap out of them. And yeah, it was a whole thing. I don't know if it was that situation specifically that kind of turned me off to Hoyas or if it was just sort of a slow burn of me kind of losing interest in Hoyas and go going back to the aeroid thing. I feel like I, I sort of go up and down with the genus and fixating on certain ones over another. So anyway, all of that said, there's a point in time where I accumulated a ton of Hoyas. I had so many, it could fill an entire cabinet. And then I slowly just kind of started getting overwhelmed with the uh, growth of them, the long tendrils, some of them weren't doing well and I just, I don't know, it, I sort of lost that interest in them. So over the last few months, I've been tapering down the Hoya collection back to the ones that I just, I really, really love. And so now my collection is much smaller. I still have quite a few, but it's much smaller than it was before. So I thought it was time to do just an updated Hoya collection video and just show you who's left. There is a chance that I might taper it down even more. Actually, there's a good chance I might taper it down more just because I, I find that there are more filler plants for me now, not so much plants that I get super excited when new growth comes. I'm not constantly like watching them like I do my other plants. And so I've just had to come to terms with the fact that maybe I'm not as much of a Hoya person as I thought I was, but there are still a few staples in the collection that I think will always remain. So this video is going to follow the same uh, format as all of the other ones um, that I did, the philodendron collection, alocasia collection, and therium. I will link all of those in the description as well if you want to give them a watch. So we're going to go through all of the Hoyas in my collection, then we're going to get into a Q&A. I opened up my questions on Instagram. FYI, I am not the person to talk to about Hoyas, so I did have to filter out a lot of the questions to just answer the ones that I felt comfortable answering. Um, and then at the end, I will tell you what is on my Hoya wish list slash some that I want to put on your radar. So yeah, let's just get started. The first ones are the ones that are in my plant room right now. So most of my Hoyas are actually living on the bottom shelf of the shelf behind me, but I do have a few in the plant room that are sort of more rehabby um, and kind of sad. So we're starting with sadder ones um, in the beginning. So the first one is going to be my Hoya undulata. I think I might have a photo of it hopefully i don't i honestly don't even remember if i ever took a photo for instagram of it kind of at its peak um when it was really really nice and big and bushy and stuff but if i do have one then i'll ins insert it here but last month i think it was last month i was doing some plant chores i kind of noticed that um some of the leaves looked a little wrinkly and yeah uh, I took it out of the pot and sure enough, it was not only root rot, like all of the, the roots rotted off, but it was also stem rot. So that plant had kind of been stressing me out for a little bit. It was historically one of my favorites, but I thought maybe this is a good time to just kind of start over from scratch and start a new plant. So I chopped it up into a bunch of pieces. I rooted them. I sold pretty much all of it and i just kept a cutting so this is please don't spill this is what is left i am hoping that my um my camera is focused because it was doing some weird things earlier give me one second 
hopefully it's fine that would suck if it's not so anyway going back to the hoya undulata this is all that is left of it i know it seems kind of drastic and crazy but i think even if i wasn't pregnant and preparing for a baby i think this probably would have been its fate no matter what it was just getting really big and the leaves were so huge like i think one of the biggest leaves was probably like this big i'm not even joking i and i just i don't even know how they were getting so big considering i was doing like the bare minimum with it but it was just a lot so i did chop this and it kind of looks like something is waking up now at this knuckle which is kind of exciting um but i just feel good to start over from scratch this is one that I have just loved since I've owned it. I would categorize this as an ancient dumpster Hoya. I might be saying that a bunch in this video. And if you're new here or you've never heard the term, it's just a term that my friends coined to describe the Hoyas that are like crusty, dusty, sometimes dead looking, ancient, prehistoric, reptilian, I don't know how else to describe it. But um, this I would definitely categorize as an ancient dumpster Hoya. So I don't know if you can actually see it in the video, but you can see, maybe you can see it through the back. I mean, what did, what did I expect really? What did I expect? So there is venation in the back that kind of comes through the front of the leaf that you can see in certain light. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it now, but it's really, really cool. It's very muted, the subtle venation of it. And then it's got these like really sort of sharp, jagged, rigid edges. Um, and then of course, like the nice little splash that comes through has a nice dark leaf. I was able to sun stress part of the plant and it turned like this, sort of dark maroonish red color and it was really really nice these leaves like i said they can get really really large so if you don't have a ton of space for plants this probably isn't the one for you i actually found that this one grew a lot faster than the rest of my hoyas for whatever reason and the leaves were just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it would just it was just a lot so yeah if you don't have a ton of space for plants um, and you want an ancient dumpster hoya i would not recommend this one i mean it's a great hoya to have but i will say that it does get quite overwhelming but anyway this is what's left of it i'm happy with it I actually almost got rid of the whole thing just in my rounds of purging I'm just like I just need to feel lighter I need more time to myself I don't want to be having to spend so much time with plant care and I really I almost got rid of it but I'm, I'm glad that I decided to keep this one around because I think I I definitely would have missed it if I got rid of it but yeah Opening with the undulata, a great, a great plant. The next one is kind of another sad one. So my Hoya Callistophila, I'm gonna insert a photo. And again, hopefully I have photos of them. I, I really didn't um, document, or I really don't document my Hoyas the way I do my other plants. So I'm not really even sure what photos I have of them when they were like, again, at its peak. But my Hoya Callistophila was one of the first, if not the first, ancient dumpster reptilian Hoya I ever owned. It was kind of my gateway Hoya into the ancient dumpster Hoyas. And this one grew like a beast. It was so bushy at one point, so big, and it was just so nice to have. But kind of the same story as my Undulata. It just one day decided that it wanted to rot. I didn't do anything differently to it. And yeah, it just uh, rotted all of its roots. It rotted its stem. So I started over. I chopped off all the roots. I got it into water. I rerooted it. It came back. All the leaves were nice and full. Got some new leaves on it even. Repotted it. And then it did the same thing. Just kind of rotted its roots randomly and, and tanked. So... This is what is left of the Hoya Callistophila. It's very sad, very, very sad. But um, I did chop it into like single double nodes or like one, two leaf plants. I sold some of them that had already rooted, but I, yeah. I'm not sure, I, I don't know. 
I'm not sure this is one that I'm gonna keep once I do get things rooted, kind of like the undulator where I kept a leaf. I mean, I might, I don't know, <laughs> but this is all that's left of her. So let me just take one out so I can just show you kind of what these leaves look like. I don't know what the difference is with all of the different types of Hoya calistophylla. I think I've seen like three types. Um, the one that can come to the one that comes to mind is the Hoya calista long leaf. But I was talking to my friend Jing, and she was like, "Well, I think that it's like more so growing conditions and environment more so than it being an actual thing where it's like there's the short leaf and the long leaf." Because I certainly, on my specimen, I've had some that had really big leaves, and then I had some that had really tiny leaves like these. So I don't know, but I was calling this the short leaf one because I did see a full long leaf specimen, and they were significantly longer. But again, I don't know if that was just immature or growing conditions or what but I do think that these leaves are really cool I think it has a nice contrast especially when it's a nice big plant it just looks so prehistoric and and dinosaur like and reptilian like and it's really really cool the leaves are pretty stiff they're not as thick as the actually they're about as thick as the undulata. The undulata can, like, in maturity, it gets really, really thick. But all of the leaves that I had grown were actually quite thin. So it feels a bit like this. But it's nice because it has, like, this, like, black outlined margin. Really dark black. Is this black? Yeah, that's black. Or, like, dark green, I guess. Venation. Not a lot of splash on this one. But there are some that will have more of a splash. Let me try and grab it this is so sad so if you look at this guy right here you can kind of see some splash on this one. Oh, this one a little bit more i don't know how you induce more splash on the hoya calistophylla i don't know if it's light or what but um yeah it does have the potential to get like little white splooches kind of looks like watercolor but i don't know i think it's a nice contrast i just find it really interesting that like at one point this was my pride and joy and now i'm just kind of like do i even want you i don't again i don't know if it's the whole thing of it being so finicky randomly but i was reading comments about hoyas and uh some people were saying like oh yeah it does great short term in pond um but it really enjoys being in soil more so um i moved the hoya calistophylla to soil after it being in pond and it rooted like a hot dam there was like a nice big robust root system but then it just ended up doing the same thing where it just randomly rotted its roots so i don't know i'm just in a place where i i don't need i don't need this back and forth you know rehabbing it coming back downhill again it's just too much of a emotional roller coaster i just need some stability so that's mainly the reason why i want to get rid of the calistophyll it's not because i don't think it's like as beautiful as I did before it's just more of the experience that i've been having with it lately so um yeah unfortunately that is all i have to show you for the calistophylla okay again we're just gonna keep going down and um doing the sad boys first this one is the most painful one that i have to confess to you today well not really confess i showed this on camera already but my hoya nicholsonia new guinea ghost this plant has been top of my Hoya list for a long time in terms of favorites. So this is what it kind of looked like in its um, prime when it was doing really, really well. Okay, give me one second. Amelia's calling, I think. Hi, Auntie. Hi, Amelia. Do you want to say hi to, the, to YouTube? Hi, YouTube. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, hi. hi, sweetheart. What are you doing? Um, your house is really far away. My house is really far away, but you. Okay, sorry. Daily FaceTime with Millie. So, um, why is this wet? So yeah, like I was saying, uh, this is my Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost at its prime. She was just a great trick was she is a great plant for me she's grown so much over the last like year year and a half and it's just been so fun to watch it get like bigger and bigger and bigger i have not taken any cuttings from this plant because i was like this is going to be an heirloom plant i want it to be like really full and really huge 
And um, that was the goal. Those were my intentions, but unfortunately the universe had different plans and it literally did the same exact thing that my Undulata and my Hoya Calistophila did. And I'm just like, I'm just so stumped because I have been doing the same routine over and over and over again for so long. And then just randomly she decided to abort and I don't know why. This is what the Hoya Nicholsonii looks like now. You know, you can see she's she was growing really well. Um, so many new growth points, so many new leaves. And it's interesting because even with the root rot, um, it was still pushing out new leaves, which is why I didn't really notice it at first. Unless you're really close, you can't see the texture of it, but like this, you shouldn't be able to do this to a Hoya leaf. Um, at least not this one. I do have the start of new roots on it now and it still hasn't perked up. I'm a little nervous because I have noticed that with Hoyas, even if you can get like a nice, full, robust root system on them, uh, sometimes the leaves don't perk back up for whatever reason, which really sucks. And I'm just keeping hope alive that once it roots even more, that all of these leaves will plump back plump back up. I haven't taken off its trellis. I haven't trimmed it because I'm just I'm just hopeful that we can pick back up where we where we left off and I don't have to change things too much. I can just repot it like this again. But it is very it's very sad. I love this plant so much and if I have to start over from a little plant again, I will. But this is a plant that I recommend to anyone who wants to get into Hoyas or likes a nice silvery Hoya. It just has so much, um, what word am I thinking of? There's just so many aspects of this plant that makes it such a good Hoya to own. For one, the texture of it. So you can see how the venation, it's very interesting. It's really, it's lighter. Usually with Hoya venation, it's darker, right? But um, on the Hoya New Guinea Ghost, it has like a lighter color in terms of the venation and then you can see at the top where it was getting close to the grow lights it has started to sun stress and it turns like this bright pinkish purplish color and it is so beautiful i had always gone back and forth whether i wanted to try and sun stress the whole plant but i'm like but i love these these leaves so much like i love how silvery and bright the leaves are so yeah i guess it was kind of nice in the way that it was growing that the top ones were getting sun stressed but the bottom ones were staying nice and um nice and silver so i kind of got the best of both worlds <sighs> and then of course like i said the universe had other plans um but i am not giving up there's no way i'm giving up on this thing like i said i'm gonna start over from a small plant again if i have to but this is what she looks like now um i always like to try and show the backs of them too because i feel like it's so underrated like there's just so many cool things about this plant that just makes it so fun to grow and i feel like if you are just a hoya lover in general this is just a staple that you have to have before we got into this position though i was growing it in pond in no drainage i was fertilizing it uh, weekly with uh, diluted CalMag and TPS1. It was living under about 20, 20 watts of light from my Barinas and it was able to stress, sun stress it kind of to this, not, it's not sun stress a, a lot just because the Barinas are not very strong, but it was able to turn a little bit purple under the Barinas, kept it in ambient. It was growing in a in a greenhouse at one point, um, but as the Hoya collection dwindled down, I didn't really feel like I needed a whole cabinet for it, but oh, I just get so sad looking at how wrinkly and sad this thing is. I'm like, please, please come back for me. This is one of the rehabs that I have right now that I'm just keeping fingers, toes, and eyes crossed because we just need all the help we can get. So please send her good vibes. Anyway, let's just move on from that. I do not want to dwell on that any longer because it makes me sad to think about. Okay, the next one is my Hoya Sabah. I don't know if that's like the full name or if I'm missing part of it, but I, it was sold to me as a Hoya Sabah. I think some of you might remember that it had like this ginormous leaf on it. It was probably like 
this big and like this wide. It was like a serving dinner plate, but it was just too much. So I chopped both, I chopped the big leaf off. I sold that one and I just kept the one leaf that it pushed out for me, which is this guy. I think this one is really, really cool. And I actually like it better as a smaller plant. It was really overwhelming having that huge leaf, trying to find a spot for it. I mean, obviously it looked really cool, but um, yeah, just not, I didn't have a spot for it. So I'm glad that, you know, the new leaf wasn't as ginormous. I mean, it's still pretty big and I kind of have a feeling if I get this on a trellis and we get it going again because this was just a cutting from it, um, the leaves will probably get nice and big again. But if you like a good reptilian looking Hoya, this is a great one because it has so much venation and so much texture to it and it does have a little bit of splash. I think it has a nice shape. Everyone always says it looks like a tongue <laughs> and now I can't unsee it. I mean, it kind of does look like a tongue. Like, look at that. This is another one that I thought that I was going to get rid of along with my undulata because I was just overwhelmed and I was like, it just kind of looks weird like this. But I think once we get more leaves going, I'm gonna get it into a nicer pot. I'll get it onto a trellis and we'll start over um, because I think if I did get rid of this one, I probably would regret it. So if you're looking for a nice, big reptilian looking Hoya, Hoya Saba might be your guy. So now we're getting into the Hoyas that are not so rehabby and chopped up and sad. And again, all of these are living down here on this shelf. It's been there probably for the last, last few weeks. Um, before that, all of these were living in my plant room in ambient conditions under 20 watts of light. So I just wanna get that out of the way in case you guys are wondering in terms of the like what I was doing for care and environmental stuff. So anywho, the next one is my Hoya Clementiorum Thailand. So I got this one from, who did I get this from? Alice? I either got this from Alice or Jing. I used to have another one and it died in Hoya Apocalypse and that was one I was really, really sad about because I actually do think this is one of my favorite Hoyas. Like the Hoya Undulata, it has like that very Look, listen, very jagged, rigid edges, super sharp. This could poke an eye out. It is so sharp and it's hard. It's a thick, it's a thicker leaf, much thicker than any of the Hoyas I've shown you so far. It has such a dark leaf and then a and then dark venation. Um, very minimal splash on mine. I have seen some Hoya Clementiorum Thailand with like bright white splooches, but I actually like that mine is more muted. Just gives it more of like an evil look. And then in the back, it has a nice contrast to that midrib in the back as well. And it has kind of like a purplish, maroonish uh, color to it. But this one has been really, really, I would say easy going to grow. In pond, no drainage, on an architrellis. Probably gonna need something a little bit bigger soon because it's on a really small trellis right now. But I acquired this as a one leaf plant. I think this was the only leaf that I had on it. I wish I, I could show you guys like how thick this is. And it actually has kind of like a micro fuzz texture to it. It almost feels like velvet, like actual velvet. But yeah, I grew all of these leaves in my care. So it has grown quite a bit. I haven't chopped it at all. Um, giving it the same care that I told you guys with um, my Hoi New Guinea Ghost. Switching back and forth every week between diluted CalMag and TPS1, all inoculated with either Great White or Billions. So. Yeah, that is this guy. And then I have another Hoya Clementiorum, not Thailand. And this one I got from Lauren at North Shore Tropicals. Very, very different. So putting them side by side. I would say the similarities between them are that they have that same jagged edges. I would say this one is more pronounced though than the Thailand. The venation is raised a lot more. Like you can kind of see it's like protruding from the leaf. It's not just like flat. It actually like you can feel every, you can feel everything. The leaf is lighter in color, which gives it more of that like 
really reptilian look like it actually looks like skin and yeah the contrast is wild it's amazing they both have that same sort of a baxial color with the maroon color, that dark mid-rib in the back. But this one is just really fun because it's a it's a really nice textural plant if you're into plants for touching them. I would say this is a good one to have because it's very rigid. I would say it's even more rigid and stiff than the, the Thailand, like you really can't bend these. Again, has that velvet feel to it velvet like fuzz to it and yeah it's just a nice plant to to touch which sounds kind of funny but i you know some of you guys know this about me but i don't only buy plants for the way they look i am very much a texture person and i will buy a plant if i even just like the way it feels so this is one of them where i'm just like oh it's just so good and she's been really really hardy I still have it in Lekka. Wait, still have, why is this in Lekka? Why is this in Lekka? That's a very good question. I don't know why this is in Lekka. I have no clue. I have no recollection of even potting it in Lekka because I think it was in, I think it was in Pond before. I don't know why she's in Lekka, guys. It's a, it's a mystery, but she's growing in Lekka. She seems to be fine. I might transfer it to pawn at some point but um she seems to be doing okay right now this long tendril oh it's just it's so thick and i was gonna chop it off but it kind of looks like something is starting here at the tip and i don't want to disrupt it oh but i did chop this plant i actually had one more leaf up here i chopped it and sent it to my friend kayla which is why it pushed out this long guy which I like want to chop off too. I just, oh, I hate, that's one thing I hate about Hoyas are the long, the long tendrils. They're so annoying. This is a really, really cool one if you are into the ancient dumpster Hoyas. This one is an, a Hoya Erythrina. Um, again, I got this from my friend Lauren at North Shore. She just randomly had this in the shop and was like, do you want a cutting of it? And I was like, um, obviously. Look at her, she's so cool. One thing I really like about this plant that I note like none of my other Hoyas have ever um, displayed these characteristics, but it kind of grows in clusters, like little clumps. So you can see it's like two leaves down here and then we have like three leaves, three leaves, four leaves. It grows, whoa, sorry. It grows in these little, these little clumps, which I really love because one thing that really irks me about Hoyas is the fact that it'll give you like one leaf and then this long tendril and then another leaf so you have these two leaves that are like a million miles apart and then you've got to trellis it to kind of make it look like it's something it has a growth pattern that it just looks nice and full on its own without really having to do anything but in terms of i have no idea how to tame the, this thing it's like whipping around everywhere so giving you a closer look at the leaf very very thick leaf again um the edges are not jagged like the other the, the clems that i was showing you it's very smooth but another textural plant like the venation is raised a bit so you can feel it um smooth not fuzzy at all um, but it has a nice again contrast between the leaf color and the venation and then it has the splooches of white and then it has this like outlined leaf margin and it just makes it look i don't know it makes it look not real it's been really fun to grow this one and um, i was pleasantly surprised by the growth pattern of it because i thought this was going to be again another one of those hoyas that kind of just push out single leaves this is actually the first time these two these two leaves up here where it didn't push out like a little cluster but at least the leaves are like closer together it probably could use a larger trellis now it could probably use an up pot it's just living in a tiny little plastic vessel in pond so this is one maybe in the spring that i will get into a much larger vessel a bigger trellis and uh, hopefully we can get more growth on it because this is one that i would like to keep trellising around and around and around and get a nice big bushy pot kind of like this next one that i'm going to show you and that is the hoya matilde this one i i have no recollection of the origins of it 
who I got it from, when I got it, what it looked like. It's just, I don't, I don't remember. I just don't remember, but she's grown a lot. I can tell you that much. I can, I can remember it was definitely not this big. Um, I've had to keep twirling it around multiple times. I do have memory of that for sure. But I saw a Hoya, I think it was, I think it was a Hoya Matilde. It was on this circle trellis and um, it was just like wrapped around like multiple times and it was just, it looked like a, a wreath and it was so pretty. So that's kind of been like my inspiration in growing this one because I thought this might be the Hoy a Hoya in my collection that I had trellised and also trailing because I like to do that. But now that I've seen it as just a trellised Hoya, I think I want to go larger. I think I'm going to try and find like a big circle trellis so that I can get it looking very wreath-like. This is one that I almost got rid of in my rounds of purges, but I'm really glad I didn't. I think I, again, would have regretted it because of how cute she's growing. She's pushing out growth up here, and um, she's been really good. Like, very, very low-key, very easy. I'm going to knock on wood because I don't want to jinx it. Um, growing in no drainage in pond. Growing on an architrellis. But, again, I think once I... I'm able to sit down and kind of think about the Hoyas that I want to really invest time into. I'm going to see if I can find this one a nice big circle trellis that we can start over and get like a nice big loop because it's pretty small right now, but it's fine because where it's living, it's able to fit. That's another issue that I'm going to have is if I do upsize a lot of these Hoyas, give them larger trellises, they're definitely not going to be able to live down there anymore. And I've been kind of toying with the idea of setting up a separate area just for my Hoyas, like a shelf area with its own lighting, with shelves that are spaced um, far apart so that I can fit it on the trellis, but I don't know where they would go. I'm like looking around my apartment and I'm truly, I am like maxed out on space. So I don't know what the plan is, um, but yeah, that's one reason why I really haven't upsized a lot of these trellises even though they've needed it it's a space thing i don't know next one on the list is my tiny little cutie hoya thompsonii this one was on my wish list for so long like it was on my wish list for like a year and a half and the whole time i didn't even know alice had it and one day she randomly was like do you want this and i was like <laughs> duh Anyway, I really, really liked this one, not because it's like the most amazing looking Hoya, like if you saw it from afar, it's like, okay, yeah, what's the big deal? But oh, the magic is up close. Look at how fuzzy and delicious it is. And I was pleasantly surprised that the fuzz isn't like a, like a green fuzz or a white fuzz. It's like a brown fuzz. <laughs> it's so cute, or it's like a caramel color, and it's just so nice to touch. I have been contemplating whether I wanted this one to trail or if I want to do the same thing as my Hoya Matilde and get it wrapped around, and I'm not I'm not quite sure yet. So I would love your guys' thoughts and votes on it because right now it can go either way. I have wrapped it around the pot quite a few times um, just because it was getting really long. But if this were you, if you have a Hoya Thompsonii, is yours trailing? Is yours climbing a trellis? I need input because I'm torn. I can see it going both ways. Maybe I could do it both ways, do the thing where half of it's trailing, half of it, half of it is climbing, half of it is trailing. <laughs> My freaking hand movements all the time. Yeah, we're undecided right now. So she just looks like this, but the new leaves, the new leaves are so cute. Look, and I'm so glad I have a new leaf to show you. It looks like a little tiny cotton ball like a cotton fuzz. It's just a single fuzz. It's so cute. Look how small it starts and it's all fuzz. And not only are the leaves fuzzy, but the, the vines are fuzzy too. Every part of this plant is fuzzy. I'm surprised the roots aren't fuzzy. I can't really appreciate it for all that it is in the state that it's in. It just looks kind of crazy right now and just sad because I've been trying to just figure out a way to tame it. Cause like, look, it's like it's actually pretty long. The internodes are quite long, so it doesn't look super bushy. It looks a bit sparse. And I just, I don't know, I don't enjoy it like this. So I think if I did have it trailing, I'd have to make sure that it was like a nice big bushy pot. I'd probably have to get some propagations going 
or something um but yeah right now we are just we're wrapping her around and that is what she's doing but um there's a part of me that's thinking it probably would be better as a trellised plant and i would just die oh my gosh if i had the hoya matilde but this version of it and all you see is just like this fuzzy wreath anyway if you like a nice textural hoya if you like coin like or disc like whatever hoyas please get the hoya thompsonii this is just so it's just so cute and nice i do think i'm gonna take some propagations of this soon i'd like to give a piece of it to my mom i think that this might be one that she likes but i might wait till she's here uh she, my mom's gonna be here for hopefully he's gonna be here for the birth of archie if things go um, according to schedule and so i was thinking of let her, letting her kind of just go free reign and taking whatever cuttings of hoyas she wants um so this might be one of them because it is very 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 cute now speaking of fuzzy hoyas fuzzy and dusty geez louise what in the heck guy you need a shower next one is my hoya velosa not as fuzzy as the thompsonii but it does have that micro fuzz um, on the abaxials of them. It's just like nice and fuzzy and cute. This is another one I, I don't think I would categorize this as like an ancient dumpster Hoya, but more so just like a reptilian Hoya um, You can see the venation kind of coming through in the back, but it has a very 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 dark leaf again another kind of sort of textural plant because it has that fuzz in the back the venation isn't as protruded as something like the clemenciorum, but it is nice to touch. It has a very smooth and glossy adaxial surface to it. Pretty thick leaf, I would say. She's pretty rigid. I've liked that this has grown very compact, but it was not always like that. It did have a nice long tendril that went 10 miles and I chopped it off in hopes that maybe it would just like activate something down here and it did. So. I don't know if you'll be able to see that little bright green spot right there, but it did um, activate some growth. I'm just hoping that this growth point that has woken up isn't going to be another tendril and we can get some actual leaves on it because I don't know. I just, I feel like I would like this plant more if it was bushier, you know, kind of like the Erythrina or even my New Guinea ghost where the leaves are just closer together. I'm not going to sit here and say this is like a must have Hoya or this is like one of the most amazing Hoyas ever. I really do think my attachment to this comes from its origins. So I got this as a one leaf cutting from Alice. I don't know what happened to it, but the roots rotted off, the stem rotted and the leaf just fell off and I just had a stick. And typically, I would just throw those kinds of things out, um, especially something like a Hoya. Like a lot of people say that it's hard to grow Hoyas from just a stick if it doesn't have a leaf or anything. But she came back for me. She was a, a literal stick for probably over a year. Um, I think I just had it either in perlite or pawn or something. And yeah, I got a leaf on it and then i got five and this is what she looks like now this one has been very slow growing for me um hasn't given me a ton of new leaves i actually don't even remember the last time i got a leaf on it i feel like it grew as a cluster and then it just stopped um pushed out that tendril chopped it off so i don't know we'll see maybe in the next couple weeks we'll have a secondary growth point but i do have another ancient dumpster hoya here why are all of these hoyas down here so dusty I've been slacking, jeez. Okay, um, the next one is a Hoya SP Germany. This is another uh, plant that I got from Alice. Definitely would categorize this as an ancient dumpster Hoya. Very, very soft, not soft, <laughs> very glossy to the touch. No fuzz at all, no uh, rigid, jagged edges, smooth edges, but really nice texture to the venation and just a texture to the leaf in general super super veiny the leaves are nice and big i think these two leaves grew in my care um i can't remember oh yeah it had the longest you can see down here i chopped it off had another long tendril i just i can't deal with it so before i used to really stress about trying to like manage them and get them on i'm not i'm not gonna get this tiny little thing onto a trellis just yet so I've just been chopping off the tendrils and it's worked for some of my Hoyas in that when I chop it, it grows growth 
closer to where all the other leaves are and I think that's just gonna be my method I don't really feel like I'm the type of Hoya owner that is going to put up with the tendrils um, especially if I have 15 Hoyas right next to each other with just long tendrils. I just don't have the patience for it I'd much rather have something like this to look at and I know that by cutting off tendrils You're potentially cutting where leaves could be growing, but I can't be bothered uh, going back to the SP Germany This is another really cool reptilian looking Hoya. I know a lot of them can look really really similar which is why I've tried to uh, get rid of plants that because, you know, I either like silvery Hoyas, fuzzy Hoyas, or ancient dumpster Hoyas. And I had a lot, I had a lot of um, ancient dumpster Hoyas at one point. But I felt like I needed to see them all side by side and remove the ones where I'm like, you guys look so similar. Like, there's no point in me keeping all of you. And so um, I've kept this one around just because I like the shape of the leaf. And I like the color of the leaf. And I just feel like it looked a little different than the other like reptilian looking Hoyas that I have. Like that, that looks nothing alike. Same with like the Callistophila, the Undulata. I do have like a good variety, I would say, in the ancient dumpster hoya category um, but not much else to say about this i haven't had it for a very very long time um, i've probably had this for maybe seven or eight months now uh, guys i have no concept of time i could have just blatantly lied to you kind of um talking about plants that look a little bit too similar this is the hoya chicken farm i know it doesn't look identical to the sp germany or the other um ancient dumpster hoyas I have but I, I don't know if this is one that I'm gonna keep around just because it's it's not really doing much for me at this point it's interesting though because whenever people ask like when I sell in um, purges or in like Lauren's live sales and stuff there's people like literally always DMing me asking if I'm gonna be selling my Hoya chicken farm or cuttings of my chicken farm I don't know maybe Hoya people enlighten me what is it about the chicken farm that is so desirable i mean i think it's really cool but i just don't see how this is like any more appealing than any of the other ones that i would have shown you and so for that reason i do think i'm going to be selling this just because i mean okay this is like the only leaf i've grown in my care and to me it's just nothing spectacular i just don't i don't feel like i love it any more than any of my other ones but kind of just highlighting what it looks like it does have splash to it it's very pretty i mean it's nice but i think if i didn't have all the other ones that i do have i might keep this one around but it's just kind of like a whatever hoya to me right now um dark leaf kind of jagged edges not as like as jagged as the other ones i showed i showed you but it's not smooth either it definitely has like a saw like texture to it the splash on it kind of varies. It's like there's white, like really bright white spots. And then there's some that are just like kind of like a muted green color. I'm kind of curious now. I'm going to like look up the hashtag and see what other people's chicken farms look like. Yeah, there are some where like it, you know, I can see, I can see the appeal. Like the ones that have a lot of splash on it. Okay, fine. I see the appeal. I see the appeal. Mine just isn't as spectacular, but again, I don't know if it's enough for me to keep around. This one's really nice though. Oh, damn. I shouldn't have done this. I was like already on the fast track to like knowing it's already on my list of plants to get rid of. Okay. So anyway, the Hoya chicken farm is very nice. I get it now. Um, but this is probably, it probably is the last you're going to see of it on my channel. I just think it's time to part ways with it. So that is that. Um, another plant that I'm kind of thinking of letting go just because it's not doing anything is this Hoya Nova Ghost. They, these are very, very pretty, um, especially when they get 
a lot more splashy and silver. I'll throw in a nice picture of a Nova Ghost. But I've had this cutting for forever and it has done nothing. But I'm like, what if it turns into that situation again, like with the Hoya Velosa, where it was just dormant for a really long time and then suddenly it came back and did something? Um, would I regret it? Maybe. And you know, it's not really taking that much space in my collection, so I probably should just like give it more of a chance. But I like, I do like this plant because the backs of it are very velvety. It's got like that micro fuzz to it, but the adaxial surface of it is smooth. And it's a super, super thick leaf. I don't know if you can tell, there's no, no bend to this at all. But yeah, not much to show you now. This is all that I have to show for this plant. Um, and I've had it for at least, I want to say at least six months now I've had that plant. I think, I can't remember if Alice also took a cutting of that plant from North Shore um, or if it was just me, but I'd be interested to know what hers looks like right now. Anyway, on a brighter note, my Hoya Linearis is alive and well. I'm gonna tell you right now, I am always, always, always walking on eggshells with this plant. I'm not gonna go too much into it right now because I did get a question about the Linearis, so we'll talk about it later. But um, I had like I had a really big pot of this from my sister, like I'm talking like big bushy trailing and I just could not get anything to work with this plant. My sister does have a really nice big um, pot of Linearis. Hers is in, I believe, a clay or a terracotta pot in soil and she waters it very, very, very sparingly. And so I thought, okay, maybe that's the trick to it. It likes to really dry out. Tried that, hated me. I almost lost the whole thing in trying to experiment with it. So now I just have it in pond in a no drainage vessel and it's actually grown quite a bit for me. Cause I started, I started only with two cuttings and then I propagated it and then I got this new growth point at the base. And so this is what she looks like now, but I have, I have big dreams for it. I just don't know if I'll be able to achieve it because I feel like it's always, teetering the edge of being alive and being dead. You can see there's a lot of like bare stem because randomly it'll just start dropping its little leaves. So we're, yeah, I'm still trying to figure this plant out. This one does have a fuzz to it, which was the major appeal to me at first. This was actually one of the first Hoyas I ever owned. Um, I actually owned a Linearis back when I said I wasn't gonna own any Hoyas before, but I made the exception for the Linearis because it was so cool. I do like its sort of whimsical, sort of hanging growth pattern to it. I like that the growth on it is very compact and close together. It's not like, you know, two leaves and then a long tendril and then two leaves again. And if you look at people's really big trailing full pots of Linearis. It is just so, so beautiful. I I do have a weakness for plants like this. So this is another one that I hope we can get more growth on. I hope I can kind of sort out all the kinks to it. Some people find this really easy to grow and some, pi some people find it very hard. I think I teeter right kind of in the middle but leaning more towards like uncertain. Tea. Yeah, this is what she looks like now. I'm very happy with it. I know it's not much to look at right now, um, but compared to where we were even like a year ago where I just had these tiny little things, I would say this is a win for sure. And it is pushing some growth down at the bottom here. So clearly whatever I'm doing right now seems to be working, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, that is the Linearis. My stomach is churning, guys. I only have two other Hoyas left to show you, and I thought I would leave sort of the best, the bests for last. God, the, I feel like the background is really taking away from how cool this plant is. You can't really see it. Oh, I guess you can see it now without the pillow, but this is a Hoya Eve uh, Rosherii. Um, I got this as a few cuttings from my friend Erin and it's actually turned out to be one of my favorites. I feel like it also has that very whimsical kind of look to it but 
a little bit more on the sinister side because it's not fuzzy and cute like the linearis like very sharp pointed leaves and it reminds me of like the ficus alii let me go grab my alii i don't show this plant very often but don't they kind of look like they could be friends like this looks like just like a bigger Evrosherii, not, I mean, climbing, obviously it's an arborist plant and this is trailing, but the leaves kind of just like, they remind me of each other, sort of. Anywho, I love the ficus alii, which is maybe why I love the Evrosherii so much, but it has a very wild growth pattern, but I kind of love it. It has like a mind of its own, it has very stiff, rigid, stems which is why it's able to kind of like hold itself up and climb upward rather than just trailing but you know as it gets really heavy it starts to fall um, but these ones right now just don't have enough leaves but i kind of like it i have had to keep cutting down the tendrils because they get a little like really really long um, but as i've chopped down it has pushed out more growth and it's gotten a lot fuller i thought this Hoya would be more difficult to own or just be more difficult in general, but it's actually been pretty low key and easy. There was one point where this was literally living with like 10 foot candles of light in my hallway and it was still pushing out growth like a hot damn. I did acquire a second one from my friend Erin. You guys might be able to see it in the background there. I don't want to show it just yet, like feature it because I'm doing a dedicated video showing some of the new plants that I got, which will be going up maybe next week, I think. Um, so I plan on combining the pots. I am gonna take a few cuttings to sell just because it is a very large plant. I've loved how big and bushy this has become, and I would just love to put, just the, put the gang back together um, and have it all growing in one long, big pot. I'm so excited. So anyway, yeah, this is the Eve Rocherii. If you guys want like a nice Hoya that looks a lot different than, you know, what Hoyas typically look like, like the big leafed Hoya, if you like a Hoya that's trailing too, get this one. It's so good. And what even is a Hoya video on this channel if I'm not gonna show you my Abovada? This, this is my pride and joy. If I only had to keep one Hoya in my collection, it's gonna be her not only because she's been so good to me like she has been so kind to me she makes me feel like a good plant parent she's just so beautiful it's it's one of those really simple common basic hoyas that you can get pretty much anywhere but i just feel like it's so underrated i feel like there is not enough love for the hoya abovada it is just such a cool plant i love the shape of it i love Something fell in my plant room. Hold on. You guys heard that, right? Nothing seems to have fallen, which is really weird. Um, okay, so anyway, yeah, I love, I just love everything about this, about this plant. I love the shape of the leaves. I love how dark they are. I love the splash on it. It's just a perfect, it's a perfect plant. It's a perfect Hoya, and I've just really, enjoyed having it it's been such like a pleasure to watch it just get bigger and bigger and bigger every year i think i acquired this in 20 the the christmas of was it 2021 i mean it's going to be on my channel i'll plug in the year that i got it but um it was quite already a big plant when i got it not as big as this i started with a few stems already but this has probably quadrupled in size um, she never stops growing and I just love it so much. This is one that I hope will turn into an heirloom plant if I'm going to pass off any plant to anyone when I am no longer here. I hope it's this one. You would think that it would be some kind of, um, you know, philodendron or anthurium or something. No, it's this one. I just can see this becoming a huge, massive thing growing on a trellis and I am contemplating actually putting it on a very tall trellis and just sort of letting it take over a corner or something because she's holding on for dear life 
on this trellis. This trellis is like screaming at me to like get something sorted because it's a lot. I'm letting parts of it trail. You can see kind of at the bottom here and I'm letting parts of it climb. So I'm just gonna quickly talk about the care for this one in case anybody is curious. Oh, I have a clip here that seems to have fallen off. Okay, so um, have always grown this one in ambient nothing super special it has always been growing in no drainage and the roots are very happy and healthy i do believe i've always had this in soil because i acquired it as a soil plant didn't feel like doing a conversion so it's always been growing in an aeroid mix i fertilize this one as much as i fertilize the rest of my other plants with calmag and tps1 uh, I do try, because it's been in here for so long, I do try and use my TPS soil, liquid soil, every few months and it kind of just conditions the soil, it like removes excess salt and stuff like that. But yeah, I, sorry, I see one leaf down here that's yellowing, but it looks like it's, oh, there, there she goes. This plant actually doesn't shed very much. Like I probably lose maybe three leaves a year which is why she's so big. But um, in general, the carrot has been just so, I don't know, minimal, easy going. Just give it a trellis to climb, give it some support, and um, it's just gonna keep, it's just gonna keep pushing out growth for you. So I love this Hoya very much. She is my main girl. Um, I can always rely on her to make me feel like a good plant parent. And um, yeah, I'm just grateful to have such a nice big specimen in my house. And if you needed a sign to get a Hoya Abovada, please let this be the one for you. I just, I look at her and I just, ugh, I'm just like, I love you so much. Thank you for, thank you for being mine. So um, anyway, that is it for the entirety of my collection. Now what I'm gonna do is get some food into my belly and uh, we're gonna answer some questions and then look at other pretty Hoyas and just chat for a little bit. So um, you will take an ad break and I'll be right back. It might be a little bit darker now because I've had lunch, well, super late lunch, and then I was on a FaceTime call with Amanda and Alice. So um, where did we, oh, Q&A. Okay, it is Q&A time. So remember I told you in the beginning, I'm only answering questions that I feel somewhat confident answering because I don't want to put anything out there that is just kind of like a guess or whatever. I actually have quite a few questions, but I'm going to I'm going to just breeze through them really quickly or as quickly as possible because I don't want to ramble too long and I'm not answering these in any specific order. I'm just answering it in the order they came in. So you're crooked. The first one is what is your preferred way to root Hoyas? Um, as you guys can probably tell by the rehabs that I have, water is my preferred. I just find that it's the fastest way to get roots on a plant. And especially if something is in like crazy SOS mode, like my New Guinea ghost, um, I just want to get hydration into it as quickly as possible. So water is my go-to. And then once it has roots that are maybe like about this long, I will get it either into perlite or pond. I think Lekka would be probably a good rooting substrate for it as well, although I don't really have a lot of experience with that. But yeah, water and perlite go to. Okay, so the next question is, do you like Hoyas on a trellis or trailing? It just depends what the plant looks like. Like if you have a plant like the Hoya calistophylla, the Hoya undulata, uh, what else do I have? Hoya clemenciorum. I can't really envision those plants trailing. So it's it's almost like the plant leaves and growth kind of tell you what it would look nice as. But then you have something like the Hoya linearis that obviously is trailing. The Hoya matilde can go either way. You can do like what I did, get it on a trellis, or that one would be nice as a trailing basket as well. Maybe I'll scoot over in case I can start plugging in some photos. But I think it really just depends on what the plant looks like. Typically, if it has really like dainty, small, coin-like leaves, my initial thought is trailing. But then, yeah, something like the Hoya Matilde. I just saw a picture of it on a trellis and was like, that's what I want mine to look like. So it just depends. My Hoya Abovada, when I first got that one, it was actually a trailing basket and it looked really nice, 
but for some reason I just my instinct was to trellis it and I liked it both as a trailing and a trellis plant and so that's one where I was like I'm just gonna do a hybrid where half of it is climbing and I'll let the other ones just kind of trail and do its own thing so yeah, just depends on the Hoya. For Hoyas in pond, do you let the reservoir go dry or do you consistently keep it wet? Typically, if I have a reservoir, oh, typically if I have a reservoir, like if I have a Leka reservoir at the bottom, the reason I do that is because I like to keep water down there consistently, um, not only for the plant to not be deprived of water, but just it's easier for me to water and keep things more hydrated that way when I have a little bit extra, essentially time to water it. But my Hoyas, or I think if you guys own Hoyas, you guys might know that they can withstand longer drought periods and some of them actually thrive in drier conditions. They'll push out a bunch of like flowers for you in drier conditions, but I try to not let my Hoyas dry out if possible, but I'm not gonna sit here and say I never let them dry out. My Hoyas actually are some of my quickest drying plants, even though they are in pond and in no drainage. So to answer this question, I guess my preferred is to not let them dry out and to always keep a reserve, but I would say that they actually tend to be on the drier side. What is your preferred long-term growing medium? I think I have most of my Hoyas in pond, with the exception of a few, like my Abovada is in soil. Actually, oh yeah, they're all in pond. So yeah, pond is my go-to substrate. And you know, I have like the instances with the Callistophylla, with the Undulata, with the New Guinea Ghost. Sometimes I question, is it no drainage? Is it the pond? But I would say that my experience overall over the last few years with Hoyas in pond in no drainage has been more overwhelmingly good and successful than not. Like I really didn't have any issues with my Callistophylla um, or my New Guinea Ghost until this happened. And it's not like I really have any issues with my other Hoyas at all. So I'm not... I'm not at a point where I'm like, oh, I'm probably not gonna wanna grow my Hoyas in no drainage and pond anymore. Kind of how I made that conclusion with Ethereum. I was just like, one day I just had enough of all the issues I was having and was like, I'm just gonna go to drainage with Ethereum. I'm not quite there yet with Hoyas just because a majority of them have been growing really well in no drainage. And I feel like my Abovada is a testament to that. Um, although that one is in soil, but I just tend to like growing Hoyas in pond for whatever reason. So that is my go-to uh, long-term growing medium. And then someone asked what my soil mix is for Hoyas and it's the same as my aeroid mix. So my base soil is either Pro Mix Mycorrhizae or Happy Frog or Fox Farms Happy Frog. Horse Perlite, Worm Castings, Biochar, for bark, sometimes orchiata, and that's it. Nothing super special with the Hoyas. I just pot them in whatever I'm potting everything else in because I just don't really feel the need to give it anything more or less than what's in there. And um, it seems to be doing fine. When do you know to repot? Okay, the only way I know how to answer this question is, and I don't know if it's because with a lot of my Hoyas, I either started them as a propagation, like a one or two leaf propagation, or if I've just acquired them as smaller plants. But typically if my medium is just drying out way too fast, meaning if I have to water it more than once a week, I'll know it's time to upsize. Um, also the same thing with any of your other plants, if you're noticing it's very root bound, then I would repot. Or if it's outgrowing its trellis, I repot. But I truly, I don't know, like if you look at a plant like my Abovada, it's a big plant, it is a very rooty plant, but it doesn't strike me as being in a place where it would need to be repotted. Yes, it needs a larger trellis, and yes, there are a lot of roots in the medium, but at the same time, I'm not so anxious to get it out of there. Like, I feel like it can live in the substrate for a lot longer. I think maybe signs that you can tell something needs a bigger pot is if 
it's drying out too fast. If you are noticing a stall in growth, whereas before it was growing a lot like faster, maybe if it's just been dormant for a really long time. These are all guesses. I'm not, I don't feel as comfortable answering this question as I would with like a philodendron or an anthurium or something. But typically my sign that I need to repot is if the watering schedule changes. What is your end goal with growing Hoyas? That's a, it's, a really, it's a really good question, honestly. I ask myself this all the time because I don't really, I don't really have one. I guess with certain Hoyas, like my Linearis, like my Matilde, like my Abovada, I kind of have like a very clear picture of what I would want. Like with my Linearis, I just want like a nice big trailing basket that can just flow and sway. Um, with my Matilde, I would love a nice big wreath like, you know, full plant. Things like that, like I, I can understand or see where like we're headed and what I want for the plant. But then you have plants like the Sabah, you have plants like the Clemenciorum where I don't really know what the end goal is. And my goal really for any of my Hoyas, it's not ever to like size up the leaf. It's not like how I feel with my Philodendron, my Alocasia, my Anthurium, where I wanna see like a nice big mature leaf um, and I know what that's gonna look like. With my Hoyas, I don't have that that urge to see a nice big leaf. I just wanna see any growth. Um, and I've mentioned this before where I think taming Hoyas and pruning Hoyas and styling them, it's, it's very, it's like an art form within the plant space. I don't think I have it. I feel like there are people who do, people, um, for example, someone that I watch religiously is Benji, Benji Plant. And he, he just has like the way his, brain works in terms of incorporating plants into his space it's very different than mine and in a lot of ways i strive to kind of adopt some of his methods in terms of how he pots how he styles how he incorporates plants into his space but i i just i don't think that that's how it naturally works for me. I feel like I'm, I'm having to force it. I'm having to rethink about videos I've watched before. I'm having to look at his photos for inspiration. Whereas he can just like see a plant and just like know what he wants for it. Um, and a lot of these plants are like wonky, sort of weirdo plants, very unique plants. And um, I don't think he has many Hoyas. I think he only has maybe a few like one or two but i feel like he'd be one of those good people to teach you how to display a hoya pot a hoya trellis a hoya just make it look more than what i've been able to show you here so anyway wow i went totally off topic but basically i don't know what my end goal is for i would say 90 percent of my hoyas i just kind of allow them to live, I hope for new growth. I, at this point, I'm just managing the growth pattern of them. I'm not really ahead of the curve. I'm just working defensively. And like I said, I'm chopping off tendrils because I don't know what to do with them. I don't have all the space in the world to tr get all of them on a trellis. So I guess I'm just enjoying them for now, but I don't really know what the end goal is. And um, I'm more, open to chopping Hoyas when they get too big and you know selling cuttings or whatever propagating putting it back in the pot but I, I don't have any really specific goals for most of my Hoyas in my collection and that's just the truth um how did you treat for flat mites um I also got the question of how you got rid of mealybugs so I kind of did this hand in hand because I had mealybugs and flat mites at the same time. That is what Hoy Apocalypse was all about. I essentially boiled them in hot water, like 120 degree water, and then I dunked them in like an alcohol mix. A lot of them died. I lost a lot of my Hoyas. Some of them came out of it just fine. And it was a very intense process. I learned a lot from it. I would never do it again, but it got rid it got rid of the mealybugs. 
I have not had a mealybug since Hoy Apocalypse. I, I feel like the only way to really, really, really get rid of them is to use alcohol repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. I'm talking like two treatments every week or at least one treatment every week. Keep them isolated, trim them back, dunk the whole thing, repot all of it. It's, it's a lot. Um, and as much as I hated you know, going through Hoya Apocalypse as much as I hated losing a lot of the Hoyas that were really sentimental to me that I got as gifts from friends. I, it's the mealybug thing, it was not it. it. They're so difficult to get rid of. And so I don't, I guess I don't regret it looking back, but all I can say is um, to just do repeated treatments with alcohol if you can. You can do alcohol and water, you can do alcohol and castile soap, or you can also use um, horticultural chart, <laughs> horticultural oil. This specifically can be used, I think, both for mealybugs and flat mites. I know that people use this in the outdoor gardening hobby. They use it for a lot of arborist plants to get rid of things like aphids and stuff like that. So um, I've never used horticultural oil before, but during Hoy Apocalypse, that seemed to be a recurring suggestion that came up. I did look it up and you can, you can buy it by the bottle as a concentrate. So if you're having issues with either of those, I would give horticultural oil a try, although I do not have experience with it. Can you sun stress Hoyas under artificial light? Yes, you can, as you saw on the Hoya New Guinea Ghost, although, um, the lights that I'm using in my house are not quite strong enough to get like a nice crazy sun stress and a nice consistent sun stress. I think the only one that I might have in my house that would work are my Soltex, which still aren't very strong, like not crazy strong, but I think it'd have to be very close to the plant. Um, but they can, they can definitely sun stress under artificial light. I have friends who are growing Hoyas that have sun stressed their plants under artificial lights. I actually don't know many people who are growing their Hoyas using the sun, just natural light. A lot of people that I know are growing them under artificial light. So if somebody tells you that you can't sun stress a Hoya under artificial light, they probably don't have experience doing it or are just regurgitating information they heard from someone else. Um, but I can say firsthand I've done it and I've seen it done firsthand with friends. How do you know if they're underwatered? They will show you. Um, you'd be surprised. Like, you know, some Hoyas are very thick, like the Hoya Nova Ghost, and typically like the Undulata is very nice and thick. The Callistophila is typically thicker than the leaves I have now, but they will, I mean, they'll show you. They'll show you that they're thirsty. Like, this is very, very wrinkly. If you don't know what a healthy New Guinea Ghost looks like, this probably just looks normal to you, but like these are paper thin. They're so soft. They should not be this soft. So if you notice that, you know, the leaves have gone paper thin, if you're noticing a lot of that venation coming through and it looks like it's just been sucked dry, that's how I've known in the past that my Hoyas are thirsty. Something like my Hoya Matilde though, I'm just using that as an example, it's harder to tell when that's thirsty, the little coin-like ones, because they don't, Unless you really, really, really deprive it of water, they don't completely shrivel up until like it's beyond the point of it being able to come back. But you will kind of notice that they just look, they just look a little less plump. Um, but you don't really want it to get to that point because Hoyas, like I said, they can tolerate a longer drought period, hold on to a lot of water in their leaves for longer. But the second that you start to notice that, notice them going really dry, you are also running the risk of getting dry rot at that point. So you don't really want to get to that point just because they are drought resistant. That doesn't mean that you can just like deprive it of water all the time. Know what the leaves look like when they're healthy. And if it doesn't look like that, then it probably needs water. Next question. Um, is it true that Hoyas won't bloom if they're trailing? False, <laughs> false. 
Um, I'm gonna throw in something. I'm gonna throw in something next to me. Um, they can definitely bloom if they're trailing. My Hoya Serpents, which I recently got rid of. I know some of you might be disappointed in me, but it's just, I just, I made a decision, okay? Made a decision, it's in a good home now. That one pushed out a few peduncles for me. Um, I never actually saw a flower on it, but uh, pushed out pedunks. I have gotten my, wait, what else has bloomed? Was it my patchy clotta? I got my patchy clotta to broom, broom, bloom, but that one was, um, that one was trellised. But no, there's certainly like plants that I've seen like at North Shore that have bloomed that were trailing. I know like people's Hoya Bellas, uh, the Bella is like notorious for blooming, I think. That one usually is trailing, but I've seen a few, um, quite a few trailing plants on Instagram specifically that have bloomed, not being on a trellis. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that is not true. Uh, I don't know where that came from. But yeah, if you just do like a quick search on Instagram, like literally just like Google Hoya or like Hoya Bloom, You'll see it, quite a few of them are trailing and they've got like multiple flowers on them. Have you ever thought about growing the Hoya New Guinea Ghost as a trailer? I have not actually. Um, I'm trying to envision it and it probably actually would look pretty cool to have like a nice silvery uh, trailing plant, but I don't know. I've always in my head saw this as a climbing, like one that would look nice on a trellis and I've never considered allowing it to trail. Although if for whatever reason, this plant does not rehab well, never comes back and I have to start over with some props, that might actually be something that I consider like doing the half up, half down thing, half trailing. Why do I always do that? half trailing, half climbing, half trailing. But no, I've never really considered doing that in the past until this question came up. Um, so yeah, that is my answer for that. And then how the hell do you propagate linearis? This plant, I think I said it earlier, you're either really good with linearis or you're bad at it. Um, I fall somewhere in the middle. All of the linearis that I showed you earlier, those were all from propagations because my main plant just completely died. Luckily, before it died, I gave some props to Alice. She is very good at growing that plant and she gave me some props back. So uh, yeah, I, I actually don't really find them to be that hard to root, but I will say that you should expect some leaf dropping when you are propagating. I have found that the shorter the propagation is, the more likely you're gonna end up just with a stick. So if you can do a longer propagation, that's better, and then get more of the stem into water and uh, that was gonna be my next point. Water has always been my go-to propagation method for the linearis specifically, just because I find that when it's deprived of water, it just drops its leaves so much faster. And also try and put it on um, some like a warm surface. If you use a heating mat, that's great. I usually just put mine on like um, a shelf that has a grow light underneath so that like the glass is warm and make sure you clean out the water because the stems are like, they can be pretty sensitive. And so if you have really dirty water and there's like bacteria in there, um, it mushes really fast. If you have a bubbler, that's even better. But if you just use water that is changed out frequently um, and putting it on some type of warm surface can really help the rooting process. And then the last question is, which Hoya would you never own again? The Hoya Manipurensis. When my friend Nikki gifted this to me, she was like, this is very finicky. She's like, if it drops all of its leaves, if it dies, please tell me, like, I will replace it if you want it. She's like, but don't be surprised. Like, it's a very, very difficult Hoya. And I, it's funny because I, when I was looking this plant up, it's like pe people either usually have like a really teeny plant or they have this like big, beautiful, luscious thing. And um, something that comes to mind is Lauren at North Shore, she recently, not recently, last year, she rehomed her Manipurensis, which was like 
so big and bushy and I looked at it like how how and I think it was like in a terracotta pot in soil she had been neglecting it she gave it to our friend Jesse she's like oh I find this thing to be really easy like it never needs anything but mine I had the tiniest little plant and oh my gosh that thing was just a pain it was such a pain and I just I can't with the finickiness of it it was just too much of being on edge not knowing if it was happy or sad and as cute as this plant is like I honestly think it's one of the cutest daintiest little Hoyas I just don't think I could ever own it again because of how much of an emotional roller coaster it was and those are all of the questions I'm gonna answer because I really really don't feel comfortable answering care questions about it talking about how to get it to bloom things like that I am not the person to talk to you about Hoya care, Hoya questions. I really just have them in my house. They're more so filler plants. I try my best to keep them alive and um, that's as, that is as far as the extent of our relationship goes. But before I let you guys go, I want to show you guys some cute Hoyas if you don't mind, if you got some extra time here. I actually only have one plant that is legitimately on my wish list. I used to have a few more, but I think I've been able to kind of separate my heart from my logical mind in saying like, I think I just really like these because they look really cool versus I can actually see myself loving and growing it long term. So really only one plant on my wish list now, which is this one, the Hoya SP Gananga Ding Silver. I have, I think I've been talking about this for years now, probably two years, but I find that they're one, hard to come across, two, the, they are not all created equally. Some are a lot nicer than others. I'm kind of showing you like the epitome of what I want. Um, and I'm not sure if this is because this is the first photo I ever saw of this plant that made me fall in love with it. So anything that came after that, I was kind of just like, eh, whatever. But I just think that this is such a cool plant. It's like the perfect combination of like ancient dumpster Hoya and like silvery Hoya. And those are like my two favorite kinds of Hoyas smushed together. I did find a cutting of this plant for sale a couple months ago and it was just so expensive and I was like nope not for me not for me but this is the only one that's seriously on my wish list and I just think it's so cool so uh, yeah it's still on there I'm not really willing to pay a ton of money for it I don't know how long it's gonna take to actually get one if I ever do get one but she remains on the wish list to this day so the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next seven are a mixture of plants that used to be on my wish list, wish list slash plants or Hoyas that I just think look really cool that I just kind of want to put on your radar if you are looking for something new to add. Um, the first one is going to be the Hoya Pandorata, Pandorata Silver. I can't remember if my friend Jing has this and I've seen it in person or maybe I saw the green version. The green version of it was a bit underwhelming, didn't really love it, but this is just super cool. And just a forewarning, a lot of these are in the silvery category. So if you're not into silver Hoyas, then you probably won't like these suggestions, but that is where I gravitate toward for some reason. If it's not the ancient dumpster ones, it's always going to be the silvery one. So, the Hoya Pandorata silver is really cool. I like how it grows in typically pairs of two next to each other, so it looks a little bit bushier. It has like that nice green splash. There's some that have more green on it, which is really nice. It has a nice green midrib, and I like the shape of the leaves. I just think it's a cool, a cool plant, and if I owned this, I would probably have it as a trailing plant rather than a trellised plant, but um, yeah, I thought this one was really cool. The next one is one that was on my wish list for a long time, and that is the Hoya Coriacea Silver. I fell in love with this plant as much as I fell in love with the Hoya SP Gananga Ding Silver, but I acquired a Hoya Coriacea from my friend, just the green one, and I thought it was really pretty. Like, honestly, it's like a Hoya that 
doesn't really look like a Hoya. Like it could look like it's, I don't know what genus it would be a part of, but if you showed me just a leaf of that, I wouldn't assume that it's a Hoya. And I just thought it was so, so pretty. And I really liked owning it when it was small. But one thing that I was not prepared for with the Coriacea is the fact it just grows straight up like bamboo. And the stems are so thick and firm. There's like really no bend to it. So it's really hard to get trellised or tamed. It just grows straight up. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like. I, I have no way of taming it. I don't even know how to display this thing. Um, and so for that reason, I took the Hoya Coriacea Silver off my wish list because I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know how to style it. And that's very important to me. I'm not gonna own a plant if I feel like I can't incorporate it nicely into the space. So as much as I think these leaves are freaking gorgeous and beautiful, the growth pattern is just not for me. The next one is the Hoya Latifolia Snow Queen. I'm not, I'm not sure if this one is on or off my wish list. I bet you if I had the opportunity to get one of these, I probably would take it. Just because it reminds me of the Abovada so much and uh, I just really like the splash on this. The only thing is that I've seen some really nice Hoya um, Latifolia Snow Queens and I've seen some that are just kind of like meh. So to add this one to my collection, it would have to be like a really, really nice splashy specimen or one with really good contrast of the green and the silver splash. But I feel like if you are into the thick leafed Hoyas that have more of a compact growth pattern, this one might be right up your alley. And I just, uh, I look at pictures of it and I'm like, it's just so cute, it's so pretty. So there's that one. And then very similarly, um, the Hoya Abovada Super Splash. I don't see this being offered very much like i don't even remember the last time that i've seen this i'm not sure i love it more than my green one because i love my green one so much but i look at pictures of these and i'm like that is really really beautiful it's really pretty it seriously looks like it was painted and again i just like the growth pattern of the abovada because it's so compact can grow so bushy the stems are thicker but it at least has a little bit of give so that you can like wrap it around a trellis you can style it the way you need to but if these had stems like the coriacea this that would have been out of my house a long time ago but the super splash is really cool i see some people selling hoya abovada splash but it's not even more splashier than the splash that's on mine and i've just been calling mine the Hoya abovada. Um, but yeah, there are some specimens where it just goes like full silver and it's really cool. Another one I stumbled upon, which is not a silvery one, is the Hoya Svetlana. It's, I think I really liked this one and I wanted to tell you guys about this one because it's, it's like a mixture of like a cutie Hoya with like an ancient dumpster reptilian Hoya. The leaves very much remind me of the Hoya abovada, like they're very round and disc-like. Um, they've got nice, it has a nice splash to it, but it has that reptilian leaf in that it's like the green with like the dark green venation. It kind of feels like the edges have sort of a texture to it. It's not like perfectly round. It kind of like crinkles and sort of like bends, but um, this one is just like a good mix of cutie and sinister. Second to last one is the Hoya Verticolata Silver Heart. I can't remember if I've ever seen one of these in person or maybe I'm remembering maybe like a picture I saw that a friend posted, but I do like this one. It kind of reminds me of like a cousin of the Hoya New Guinea Ghost in that they have a very similar silver color to them where it's not really silver. It's more of like a light minty green. Um, and then it has like that subtle splash of dark green in some places. So instead of like the reverse where you have a silver leaf with, or where you have like a dark leaf with silver splash, it's like silver splash with like the dark, silver leaf with a dark splash. Um, and I really like the shape of these leaves. I like that it's kind of like a teardrop shape. 
very very shiny um, it looks like it have a thicker leaf to it and it's like plate like so you can kind of like there's a little bit of like raised venation and it has that cute little sort of like pink sinus area it's just oh, it's so cute I think I think the sun stressing on this is really pretty it has the same sun stress color as the New Guinea ghost and maybe that's why I like it so much um, I think these are kind of expensive though from what I can recall seeing in a sales post before and I don't really think it's offered all that much but I could be wrong I'm totally like the Hoya market I have no idea about it and then the last one I just discovered last night and I think I'm I think this one's on my wish list I'm not sure I think it might be I think it's another one of those things where if it presented itself I'd probably be like yes please give me one so I've seen two sort of different kinds and I don't know if they're misidentified or if they are if they are the same and it's just the specimen but I'm gonna show you this one first so um, this is a Hoya pyrifolia and when I saw this I was like oh my gosh could you be any cuter they're like the shape of these are they're like little um, what candy am I thinking of like you know the hot tamales like the Mike and Ikes but just like a teeny t like they got shrunken down and I like that it's so compact it's bushy it looks like it can trail and it's just so cute they look like little gummies like succulent gummies or if like a succulent and a Hoya like made a baby it's just so cute but then you have a specimen like this where it seems like it's a little um, flatter and like cone shaped I don't know like it doesn't look like it would be the same plant right I could be showing you guys two totally different plants and I think you guys might know better than me but they're both very cute you know one is more teardrop shaped and um, the other one is like very like hot tamale Mike and Ike's shaped and then here's a third one also tagged as the Hoya pyrifolia and this one's kind of like a flat looks like little potatoes like little oval potatoes you guys this is the worst explanation of all time but let's just say whatever the hoya pyrifolia is if it's any of these three i think they're so cute although i just i lean more towards the first one this one i don't really dabble in the hoya world too often so i don't have a ton of again i don't have a ton on my wish list i don't have a ton of cool ones to show you but i thought those were worth mentioning at least but yeah that's gonna be it for me today you guys i feel like this hoya video was a lot longer than i anticipated um, but hopefully you enjoyed it i don't make a lot of hoya content i really don't enjoy making hoya content just because i don't yeah it's not my passion and I don't know a lot about them, but I thought I would throw this in there because it's been a while since I've featured any of my Hoyas and um, some of you guys have been asking about it. But thank you guys for being here for another Wednesday upload. I think this is going up on Wednesday. Um, Saturday, you will see the installation of this beautiful thing next to me. Uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one.